Welcome to another edition of Smash the Numbers, Voice of College Football, Michigan Football at the Voice of College Football. Today we are going to talk about some defensive core metrics coming up next. All right, before we get started, I wanted to let you know about a couple things. First of all, please like and subscribe to this video, would really appreciate it. We are growing very, very fast, and we wanna make our goal of getting ahead of the Ohio State um, channel by the Texas game. So that's our goal, that's our stated goal. We wanna do it, we need your help. The Ohio State channel is growing, we're growing faster, we wanna pass them. So please help with that if you're a Michigan fan, would really appreciate it that. Also, want to give you a little fashion tip. I did wear a gray shirt today. And if I'm going to wear a gray shirt, then I've got to wear a gray hat. But if I'm going to wear a gray hat, it better be a Michigan championship gray hat. <clears throat> That's the reason to have multiple uh, championship hats, multiple Michigan hats, because they need to go with uh, all the decor, all the decor, all of the outfits that you have. So uh, just a little thought there. Okay, now, we are going to go over uh, defensive stats. I did an offensive version of this. I want to kind of state at a very high level what I think the offense is going to do, what I think the defense is going to do. I do believe there's going to be some regression on the offensive side of the ball. We cannot expect um, maybe the greatest quarterback of all time uh, probably the greatest running back of all time as well on the team at the same time. We should expect some regression. That happened in 2023, 2024. We don't have them anymore. We have a brand new quarterback, but we do have Donovan Edwards. I went over this in detail uh, in a different smash the numbers, so take a look at that. I'm going to revisit this as well at, at the beginning of the season as and also as the season goes along. But today we're going to talk about the defensive side. And on the defensive side, I do believe that Michigan has the chance to be as good. Do I want to say even better? Let's just say on par, as good as they were last year. Now, what I would say is that maybe the run defense will be a little bit better. And the pass defense, I don't know if the secondary is going to be as good. So, so I would say... Some of the, my optimism comes on the run side versus the pass side. But overall, is the defense going to be similar? Yeah, I, th I think there's a really good chance that defense could be similar to last year's output. I've got 15 stats. I have, um, for each of those stats, I've given kind of the importance of whether it's a high importance, medium importance, or low importance. So let's get right now to the numbers. Let's go smash the numbers on my uh, spreadsheet, which I created in Excel. All right, so I am going to go from the stats that I believe are most important, and then we're just gonna keep running down uh, the stats from there. So the first, and then you know, from most importance to least importance, number one through 15. Um, you know, keep in mind, Michigan is going to with some teams, they're expected to blow them out. In other team, with other teams, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, um, uh, hopefully Michigan can keep almost every opponent under 20 points, but it really is a function of not just defense but offense. Uh, whether that happens, if the offense turns the ball over and the defense gets the ball uh, inside the red zone, or I'm sorry, if the defense is defending inside the red zone, the other teams within the red zone to begin a drive, you know, that's very different than if they start at their 20 if they, and they have to go 80 yards. So, um, so just sort of keep in mind, I mean, if we beat Ohio State and Oregon and Texas five to three, uh, it's not going to bother me if we beat them five to three versus uh, 45, 23. You know, either way, we just, if we win the game, that's what's the most important thing. Obviously, that is the most important stat. But a luck plays a very big role in it. So, um, you know, some things are controllable, some things are not. 
the first stat I would put up here is yards per play allowed. Uh, I really like this stat, and I think it is something that we should track across all opponents. And, um, you know, every play the opponent has, how many yards do they get? Realistically, I believe we can match the number that we had last year for that. Um, so, uh, you know, optimistically, uh, so in 2023, you know, that that's the second column there, uh, or third column, um, 4.3 yards per carry. Realistically, we can match that. Optimistically, um, we can beat that and get to four yards per carry. Pessimistically, uh, 4.6, I said yards per carry, I meant yards per play allowed. Uh, 4.6 yards per play allowed. Okay, let's go to the next important stat, which I consider high importance, and that is penalty yards per game. So I do believe this is a controllable stat. This is in Michigan's control, obviously. Um, you know, referees are going to officiate games a little bit differently. So um, there is some wiggle room there with respect to that, but it is largely in uh, players' hands. And I think penalty yards per game is more important than penalties per game, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. So what we're looking at there, um, Michigan had 40 yards of penalty on defense alone in 2023. I think realistically, uh, Michigan should match that optimistically, you know, cut 10 yards off of it if you could, right? <laughs> and pessimistically, you're going to add another 10 yards. So, um, uh, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm not concerned about the raw number of penalties, but the penalty yards per game is probably the number that that uh, that I would look at more. We, we want to have a very disciplined team on defense. All right, let's get to the next stat. And the next stat is turnovers, the interceptions that we get, the interceptions that we are able to get uh, to produce a turnover. In 2023, there were 1.2 of those per game. Realistically, I don't think we're going to get that high, you know, maybe one per game. Optimistically, maybe we match that number. Pessimistically, uh, 0.8. The reason why I made this a the realistic or the optimistic number matching last year is I just don't think um, our secondary is necessarily going to be as good as it was last year. Of course, we have Will Johnson, uh, but we did lose a lot on the secondary side. So I'm just trying to be understanding of that. You know, I think on um, the run defense, we should be good. Pass defense, I do think there's going to be a, a little bit of a regression. All right, so that brings to mind um, the next stat, which is the turnovers, fumbles. We, uh, we recovered... Um, 0.6 last year uh, per game, 0.6 fumbles uh, recovered. We, you know, I think realistically we can get that to point, uh, you know, realistically we can match that optimistically. Can we push that number up a little bit, uh, maybe to 0.8 and pessimistically, you know, half fumble per game. I do think our schedule is also harder than last year. So even if we had played last year, or the same team that we had last year, if they had to play this year's schedule, I don't think all the stats are going to be looking at quite as good as last year. So just kind of, you know, that is another factor that, that uh, we should probably factor in here. Okay, then the next stat I have is the first downs allowed per game. Earlier, I kind of pointed out that, hey, you know, uh, if a team gives up points and those points are based on the other team getting the ball already in the red zone to begin a drive, it's it's not really fair on the defense. So, you know, what is fair? And I, I, I think yards per play allowed is fair. Uh, and I also think that first downs allowed per game is fair. Um, so, you know, I think in certain instances, sometimes teams are kind of bend but don't break and they do allow first downs and then, you know, they, they, it converts into maybe field goals in, instead of touchdowns when, when another team gets in the red zone. 
But I think for this particular Michigan team, last year, uh, 13.3 first downs allowed per game. Can we get, can we match that number? If we can match that number, I think we'll be in really good shape. You know, optimistically, can we beat the number and have it, uh, the other team only get 12 first downs a game? You know, pessimistically, 14 and a half or 15 first downs per game is what we'd be looking at. At the end of every game, these are the kind of stats that I would want to look at um, and just kind of see, okay, does it make sense from a statistical standpoint of the things that the Michigan defense had under their control? Uh, these first five that I have right here, you know, I believe these are largely in the Michigan defense's control, right? Okay. All right, so then the next stat we have is the yards per carry allowed. So this is a rushing stat. And, um, you know, Michigan was remarkable in that they only allowed three yards per carry, uh, you know, across the entire season. Realistically, I believe we can match that uh, with our defensive front. Uh, optimistically, we can beat that, you know, maybe get to 2.8 yards per carry. Um, you know, pessimistically, regress a little bit, and it's about three and a half yards a carry. So um, that's what I would be looking for uh, in terms of a stat to just match what we did last year in terms of yards per carry. All right, let's keep going. All right, now we have yards per passing attempt. So you know, just in general, for the, with all of these stats, I think it's really good to go to Sports Reference, or you can watch this video, you know, and get sort of a primer on what, where was Michigan last year, and what do we want them to do this year. So when you look at stats, you know, um, you know what is good and what isn't. So in this case, yards per passing attempt, we are looking at um, six points. Or I'm sorry, in in. 2023, it was 5.7 yards per passing attempt. I think we do regress a little bit. So I'm making what we did last year into the optimistic 5.7 uh, yards per passing attempt. Realistically, six and a half yards passing attempt and pessimistically, seven and a half yards of passing attempt. So, um, you know, let's, you know, acknowledge that our uh, secondary might not do quite as well with this metric. All right, now the next metric that I have is the opponent completion percentage. So when I talk with John and TJ, we have been, it's kind of a running joke that 62% is the magic number for Alex Orgy. He needs to get up to 62%. And that is kind of the sweet spot for completion percentage. Actually, I don't really think even in the case of Alex Orgy, the completion percentage is in, as important as other stats. But if I were to pick a number, that would be kind of the, the magic number, so to speak. Conversely, uh, Michigan did a great job last year. 55.2% it was their completion percentage against. So, so you know, holding their opponents to 55.2%. Realistic, you know, I'm, I'm looking at that as an optimistic number. Realistically, we're talking about maybe 57%, pessimistically 60%. So another number to look at on the passing side. And I, and I do like to think about the running side versus the passing side kind of separately because um, different, I mean, everybody works together, obviously. But, uh, you know, one of the things to look at is the opponent is the opponent a 50-50 running passing team, or are they more run heavy than pass? So for example, Michigan ran 61% of the time last year. Ohio State ran 51% of the time uh, last year. That is vastly different uh, in terms of um, their strategy. So when you look at your opponent, uh, can you hold them on the thing that they're strong in and just shore up the thing that there might be weaker in, right? So, so that that's what I'd be looking for uh, with respect to that. So the pass versus run is kind of dependent on um, uh, your opponent and what you're trying to focus on, you know, what you're trying to take away from them. Let's put it that way. 
All right, the next metric is penalties per game. Um, so way at the top, I put penalty yards per game. The, the raw number of penalties per game, I consider less important. Michigan had 5.1 on the defensive side last year. I think matching that would be great. You know, realistic or optimistically, we cut that down to three, pessimistically six, you know, so, so somewhere in there. But uh, the reason why I don't consider this as important as penalty yards per game is a five yard penalty is a lot different than a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> so um, uh, it really kind of depends on the situation. Sometimes it's warranted uh, to take a penalty as well. So, so you know, just just some thoughts there uh, with respect to that. Um, rushing yards uh, allowed is my next stat. So let me pull that out. Uh, so rushing yards allowed. Uh, the raw number of yards last year um, was 90. Uh, so only 90 yards given up. Realistically, let's go ahead and match that. Optimistically, let's beat it by five yards, get, get it down to 85 pessimistically, you know, we're at 95 or, or even 100 yards a game. Okay. Next stat is passing yards allowed. So um, Michigan gave up 157 passing yards per game last year. I'm going to put that in the optimistic slot. I'm going to say realistically, they're going to give up 165 and uh, pessimistically 175. All right, let's keep going. All right, next metric here is sacks. All right, so, okay, so sacks is a, it's an interesting metric because teams could get a lot of pressures, not get sacks. Um, uh, sometimes a player has an advantage and all of a sudden they get two sacks in a row, you know, something like that. So it's a very streaky stat. And I don't know how, how in the grand scheme of things, important the sack number is, but it is a collected stat. It, you know, it is something that, you know, you could strive to get, get that number up. Um, so I put it kind of at me, as medium importance and I'm going to say, uh, 39, is kind of uh, 39 is what they had last year. Uh, let's go ahead and try to match that. You know, optimistically, let's tack on a few more, make it 42. Pessimistically, maybe 37. Um, and from defensive players, the other thing that stats or sacks do is that it gives them kind of a raw metric. You know, it's kind of like the home run metric for for defensive players. Um, so. It is fun to track that stat, but I would not call it a high importance stat. All right, now let's keep going. Okay, so now I have the last three metrics, which I consider lower importance. And uh, so the first is the time on defense. So does time matter? Yeah. I mean, I think if, if, uh, an offense can hold the ball, like Michigan held the ball for seven minutes at the end of the fourth quarter, uh, or most or a lot of the fourth quarter against Ohio state last year, that was really important. It basically kind of ended the game. Ohio state got one, you know, um, low percentage pass complete. Then they tried another low percentage pass at the end of the game. And it was a interception. So, um, uh, they were lucky to kind of move the ball into Michigan territory, but, uh, realistically the odds of them scoring against the Michigan defense with less than a minute left were very low. And the Michigan defense on a prior drive, uh, or I'm sorry, Michigan offense on a prior drive, um, went seven minutes, held the ball, kept the ball away from Ohio state. Okay. So I get that on the fourth quarter, but in general, the time on defense, I don't think is really super important, but let's see what happens. You know, I, th I think, you know, Michigan had 27.8 minutes on defense, um, your rounds to 28. So we'll, we'll call that the realistic number. Optimistically, can we, can we make it 26 minutes and pessimistically can, you know, maybe it's a 50, 50 game. Each team has the ball for 30 minutes. 
Um, of course, this metric is also kind of dependent on not only the defense holding the uh, the opponent, but the offense getting a whole bunch of first downs. So, so it's kind of a, a combination stat, offense and defense. Um, I don't think it's super important, but I do think it is something that can, you know, we can track and we can see situationally where it made sense, where, where uh, time on defense makes sense. All right. Then we have uh, passing touchdowns per game allowed. And I'm going to couple that with the running, rushing touchdowns per game allowed. So Michigan gave up 0.5 passing touchdowns. They gave up 0.6 rushing touchdowns. Does it matter to me which one somebody scores if they score a touchdown from the five-yard line, 10-yard line, whatever? Uh, it really doesn't. Uh, if they give up a touchdown, that's uh, it's important. Obviously, I, I don't have point. I actually don't have points here. You know that obviously points is the most important stat on defense. Um, you know, the, these are stats that build up to points given up, right? But um, I, I, I'm not going to be picky about which way the opponents get a passing touchdown uh, per game versus rushing touchdown per game. Um, uh, I will also say what I said before, that it really is kind of dependent on where the defense gets the ball. So... Uh, on situations where it's already in uh, opponent territory, that's different than if it's on the Michigan 20-yard line or uh, 25-yard line and the other team has to drive uh, almost the length of the field. So, um, you know, a lot of people are interested in those stats. I would say the raw number of points per game is important, uh, but there's a situation to it uh, as well. All right, so there you go. I presented 15 stats. The most important stats, obvi uh, stat is obviously points given up per game. So I, I didn't even put that number in there. But the um, stats that I think are important are the yards per play allowed, the penalty yards per game, the turnovers, the first downs allowed, the yards per carry, yards per attempt, you know, those are the kind of things that I think, you know, in terms of importance, you want to look at what the Michigan team has more control over. And I think all of those stats, they have a relatively large stake in kind of controlling those stats and being able to be focused, disciplined, and hitting their numbers, so to speak, on those stats. So let me know in the comments below what you think of my 15 metrics. Uh, we will revisit this throughout the season. We are working on both a pregame show and a postgame show uh, uh, for every game that Michigan plays. And uh, likely, I'm going to be on the pregame show. So I look forward to discussing these numbers and others in preparation for each opponent uh, starting in just a few weeks. Cannot wait for the season to start. All right, so if you got this far, please like, please subscribe, and please help us get to uh, uh, the Ohio State level of subscribers by the Texas game. That is our goal. We are looking for you to help us get there. Thank you.